welcome to another episode of Code for Thought. I'm Jacqueline Laird, the South Korea Sustainability Institute's Communications Officer, and today I'm joined by Sophia Batchelor, one of our fellows from 2022. Hi, Sophia. Hello. Could you tell us a bit about where you're based and what you do? So when I initially applied for the fellowship, I was still a PhD student at the University of Leeds. I am now a researcher and community manager at the Alan Turing Institute, which I absolutely love. And it's really cool that I've got to continue the work that I started in the fellowship while it leads um, and build on it more here while I'm at the Turing. And what are your plans for your SSI fellowship? How have you used them so far or how do you plan to use them? Um, so when I initially applied, um, I was again doing a PhD in neuroscience and I was really um, struck by the reproducibility crisis and how it applied to my field when we're using research tools, specifically virtual reality and how we're building these computational environments. So what I wanted to do was kind of two parts. First of all, I wanted to build a community and really support researchers through developing targeted workshops for psychology students, for neuroscience students and early career researchers that supported skill development, you know, focusing on what needed to be done from a software standpoint throughout the research process to make sure that the research being done was reproducible um, and ensure that when someone handed down a piece of code you know from a postdoc to um, a graduating student to a new student that code could actually be handed down instead of you know a third of the document being commented out, um, someone's notes not being filled in and you kind of getting this cobbled together piece. So I really wanted to support this kind of skill development aspect. And then the second part of it was around what could I build and what tooling could I do so that the research being done in the, the virtual reality space could be reproduced because a lot of the softwares that we used weren't able to kind of be, be reused or repurposed and had to be scrapped every time any tiny iteration had to happen. So my plan for the fellowship was really around hosting these workshops and then um, helping train people in, in these tools that, that I would be building um, along with a, a community of other developers. And have you run any workshops yet or are they yet to come i have actually um i think what ended up happening with my fellowship that i really love was that when i started kind of focusing on identifying what skills the, the you know my fellow students fellow researchers needed is that there were such a skill gap when it came to using something as github and I had always seen GitHub as like a spanner or a hammer or a screwdriver. It is a tool that is being used to then build a car or a cabinet or whatever it else it is. And so I have so far delivered 11 workshops, <laughs> averages out to about one a month on things like GitHub and using Binder um, and creating these computationally reproducible environments so that projects could be handed down um, throughout a lab as students kind of graduated. And it's been the coolest part of my fellowship that I haven't actually got to any of that tool building stage as what I feel like I've been able to do has been to support other researchers because I'm just teaching them how to use a hammer and then the other one coming up with a car. <laughs> I've used to use that analogy and it was so cool to be specifically an SSI fellow because one of those workshops that I did was initially to one, another one, another fellow in my cohort and then to her entire research group as their, her SSI um, project was about community building and putting this entire research project that that group's been working on for five years and tr making it all open source and so I just using that analogy I was like oh this is what it would take to kind of make this project open source and this is how you could use these tools to support it and that's what I've managed to do <laughs> over over the course of my fellowship um it's been really awesome a really really cool experience oh that sounds really good um, have there been any other unexpected outcomes from your fellowship? I think I have definitely, I mean, aside from the, the part of like, I thought I would kind of be more 
building tools that other people would use um, as opposed to, to teaching others how to use the tools that already exist, I think was the biggest change in mindset. I think for me, having to wrap my head around the idea that we don't exactly need anything new, we can use the tools that, that exist out there and re reuse them, which is kind of at the heart of what the SSI software sustainability is, is that we don't need new pieces of software. We need to be working on making what, what exists repurposable, reusable for other research purposes. And so I've been a lot more connected with other communities such as the Turing Way. And through that, that's what's landed me here at the Turing Institute now. Um, so I guess it was kind of like a really cool um, path through the fellowship, being connected with other communities and uh, learning more about what's out there and then supporting all of these communities. I, one of these workshops, um, I also gave at Carpentry's conference um, just a few weeks ago. So I think that, yeah, there's been a really cool kind of outcome of that as being connected to so many other people who care about this uh, work in this space and are focused on teaching and supporting instead of kind of creating. So at the end of your fellowship, what will success look like? What do you hope to have achieved? I really, I, I think what success for me now looks like is that I would like to be attending a workshop that's led by one of the people that I have then taught how to use the tool because that's kind of how knowledge is disseminated. One of the other fellows and I from my same cohort are also working on a paper to essentially give an overview of what a design, like a human-centered design process looks like when designing these, these sustainable uh, pieces of software for research purposes. So I would also love that paper to actually go through the peer review um, stage because we're going through final edits right now. And I think that would be a fantastic um, kind of output. But for me, success is definitely the being able to take a step back, knowing that the knowledge that we've created and curated is then getting passed along or to, you know, see something on Twitter that one of these kind of software packages was used by a student who in their first year who's just been accepted into their PhD program. Um, I think that's definitely, I mean, I know it's very like personally rewarding to, to see that, but it definitely would represent a culture shift within academic research and academic software towards what we are as kind of an SSI are working towards and what people who care about uh, reproducibility and reuse and the, sus the sustainability of, of research software um, are trying to work towards. So seeing even just like a smidge of that culture shift, I think would be amazing. Well, it sounds like you're putting in all the work to make that happen. <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel incredibly lucky. It is so cool that what I initially planned has changed because I think it is so much better for it. Could you tell us a bit about your experience of applying for the fellowship? Was it your, your first time? Did, was it a reapplication? And if you have any advice for people who are listening, thinking about applying? Yeah, so it was, it was my first time applying. I definitely didn't know what to expect and I thought that uh, when I initially applied I was like oh you know there'll be some sort of like whiteboard and like application a whiteboard interview and it was all about you know how do we build good software for research purposes and what I kind of was faced with was um, how do we collaborate and you know the collaborations workshop the collaboration sessions that the SSI run are far more ref reflective of what the application process kind of actually is I came out of the you know application interview process not caring if I even got in got like got the fellowship but I had people's emails because I wanted to follow up with them and do the things that we were brainstorming and build the, the pieces and run workshops as we'd been chatting about throughout the application process and I ended up forgetting that it was I was trying to apply and like win win something at the end of the day because I've never gone through a process where it was inherently so deeply about collaboration and how can we form a community of people committed to this kind of culture shift and working together to do so. It was 
an awesome process to go through. Um, so my advice would be to, I think, I think my personal advice to, to anyone applying would be to not necessarily worry about how you're going to change the world of research software, but to think about what does this space need and how can we collectively solve those problems or solve those issues and how can you in your position you know if you become an SSI fellow support your other fellows in your cohort and to support past cohorts uh, I know everyone says and it's very corny but it's like once a fellow always a fellow and so um thinking about like what network can be built to, to support a greater culture shift towards a sustainable software and, and research and, and elsewhere so if there's any any advice it would be like thinking about those kind of bigger picture pieces and relax like it's an incredibly fun process so like enjoy the process for what it is it's not like applying for a grant so <laughs> have fun well, that makes it sound, sound loads of fun. <laughs> One of Did you manage to follow up with any of the contacts you made from the, the application process? Yeah, I was. Um, so luckily four of them are also fellows <laughs> in my cohort, which I think was really, really cool. So we've, we've been working on the, the pieces that we actually came up with kind of through through the application process that were either tied to our applications or external. So one of them was, was that paper that I mentioned. Uh, one of them again was almost accidental about you know me supporting one of the other other cohort fellows getting their work on GitHub and that workshop kind of made me think about how do we how do I treat this as a tool where all I'm doing is teaching people how to use a tool that can then be applied to whatever project that they need and then the other two have stayed in touch and been like we do not have bandwidth to build this awesome thing that we were chatting about but one day we will. I think it's really cool. So we've got like a little Twitter chat um, and it is just a wonderful experience to meet other researchers that care so deeply about this topic as opposed to publish or perish or, you know, what someone's H index or K index is. It's about like because science at its heart is meant to be how do we improve our knowledge of how anything works how do we just improve knowledge and science for the sake of science is enough and so how can I as a researcher scientist contribute something that supports the next generation of scientists and researchers and so it's really just a generally cool vibe to be working with other people who also care about this it sounds like you're you're fully booked with um, collaborations, but if any if anyone wants to connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Is it your Twitter? Uh, definitely Twitter. It's the place that I probably have the least amount of things in my inbox. And I think um, Twitter is also really great because it's easier to kind of send links over. Um, I'm super involved in the Turing Way as well. So the Turing Way is kind of like a curated book of resources. So it's not like a traditional book that you read about how to do research ethically, sustainably, um, how to make it reproducible. And so um, I really encourage people to like check it out as a resource. Um, but also if you want to get involved with that community I'm there at every collaborations cafe so if you also want to just chat to me you can come along to that I think yeah but otherwise um if you, you're thinking of applying send me a twitter dm I'm more than happy to grab a coffee it's super cool to to be a to be a fellow in the most recent cohort um and if I can support like future fellows in any way um more than happy to thank you Sophia for coming on the podcast thank you for having me and thank you to our listeners for joining us. If you'd like to get in touch with Sophia, we'll share the links in the bio for the podcast. And you can join in the conversation on Twitter using hashtag Code for Thought. Thanks for listening.